Hello everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. I'm Brittany Lung. Let's get started with our Race Face Drivers. Sheldon Creed, who was at Michigan International Speedway in the Gander Outdoor Truck Series, where he started 18th in the field of 32 trucks. Sheldon entered the weekend with a must-win scenario to get in the playoffs. He led the race three different times for a total of nine laps, but at the end came up one position short, finishing second for the second race in a row. He finished the regular season off eighth in the point standings. Up next, the high banks of Bristol Motor Speedway this Thursday night. Anthony Alfredo was also at Michigan International Speedway sporting a new sponsor, Precision Vehicle Logistics. Anthony qualified 19th, but quickly made his way to the top 10 and was positioned for his best finish of the year, running as high as fourth and setting in 10th place for a late race restart with four to go, but was caught up in someone else's mess that ended his day being scored with a 26th place finish. Up next, Las Vegas Motor Speedway on September 13th. Toyota Racing and 5150 development driver Jesse Love was at the new Stockton 99 Speedway for the Power Eye BCRA Tom Manning Memorial in his number five Trace Van Dyne midget. Jesse won his heat race and was scheduled to start on the pole for the feature race. Someone offered a $100 bounty if he would start last and could pull off the win. Bet you can guess what he did. He took that challenge, started the race last, and raced his way to the win. Jesse had a special guest in attendance for the race, NASCAR talent scout Lauren Grenier. Seen here in victory lane with the team. Up next for Jesse, four races in four days in the Power Eye Series at Fairbury Speedway Thursday, Lincoln Speedway on Friday, Macon Speedway Saturday, and ending up on Sunday at Jacksonville Speedway, all in Illinois. Brian Henderson was at New Jersey Motorsports Park in Millville, New Jersey, to race his Friends of Jacqueline Foundation Spec Miata. On Saturday, Brian started sixth in the qualifying race and brought home a second place finish, giving him a fifth place starting position for the feature on Sunday. Brian had a few electrical issues though, but fought through them, finishing fourth in the main event. Up next for Brian, IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge at Virginia International Raceway on August 24th. Joey East traded in his stock car over the weekend to get back behind the wheel of his Focus Midget at the new Stockton 99 Speedway, where he was attempting to make it four wins in a row and did exactly that. Joey parked it in victory lane, keeping his Focus Midget season perfect. Up next for Joey, 5150 Junior Late Model, and nut up pro late model at Madeira Speedway on August 24th. Joey will also be helping out at this week's Junior Late Model Challenge Camp at Madeira Speedway. Connor Mosack was at Hickory Motor Speedway in Hickory, North Carolina for the NASCAR Wheelin All-American Series Twin Races on Saturday. In qualifying, they had a shock bolt come loose resulting in a ninth place starting position for the first main event where he finished seventh. In the second race, he got caught up in two different incidents but still managed an eighth place finish. Connor has only finished outside the top 10 once in 22 starts this year. Up next for Connor, back at Hickory on August 24th. Joe Valento returned to the Midwest Truck Series in his KBR Performance Chevrolet at State Park Speedway for his first visit to this tough little track. Joe qualified 10th, but started second in the feature race due to the invert. Joe ran up front for most of the first half of the race before getting caught up in several incidents, but still managed to bring home another top 10 in eighth position. After the race, Joe had this to say, we had another fast truck. We managed to stay out of the big one and finish eighth. Not what we were looking for, but we learned a lot racing on this small and technical track. Up next for Joe this weekend at Madison International Speedway. Grant Thompson was at Mobile International Speedway in his Gale 4 Suspension Chevrolet Pro Truck. Grant qualified P1 and started the feature fourth after the invert. Grant quickly moved into second place and ran there just a couple of car lengths behind the leader with a pre-race strategy to stay there until the closing laps. But on lap nine, the right rear tire started to go down and by lap 11, it was completely flat, forcing the team to pit and change tires. This race saw all 25 laps run under green, resulting in a seventh place finish. 
that finish cut into Grant's points lead with 21 points to 12, with one points race remaining on September 7th. Up next for Grant, he will be attending the Junior Late Model Challenge Camp at Madeira Speedway on Friday and Saturday, along with his race face teammate, Kobe Sokol. Both were selected from hundreds of applicants all over the country and internationally. More on that later in the show. William Cox was at Carteret County Speedway in his legend car, where persistent rain pushed Saturday's race to Sunday. Once the clouds cleared and the rain stopped, Will qualified 18th and finished 10th overall and third in the Young Lions, in a race that saw 23 cars take the green flag. Up next for Will, spec Miatas at Virginia International Raceway. Race face drivers who didn't compete last week, but will see action this week include Sam Mayer, who will pull double duty at Bristol Motor Speedway in the NASCAR k and Pro Series and make his debut in the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series. Adam Lemke will be at Ocean Speedway in his Dirt Midget on Friday. Bryce Bazanson NASCAR Wheelin All-American Series at Evergreen Speedway. Race Face founder Rod Wortham will be at Madeira Speedway for the first annual Junior Late Model Challenge Camp this Friday and Saturday. The camp has invited 12 racers and three alternates to participate in this two-day camp, where drivers will have the opportunity to get behind the wheel of a Nate Clower Junior Late Model and attend seminars covering both on-track and off-track topics. Race Face drivers Joey East and Jake Bowman will also be at the camp to assist in the two-day event. We look forward to bringing you an update on how the camp went on next week's show. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you missed any of our shows, you can get caught up on raceface.tv on demand. Don't miss Race Face Spotlight on Thursday at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this week featuring young rising star Joey East. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media, and we'll be back with you with more from your favorite race face drivers. Get out there, have a great race week. I'm Brittany Lung. Thanks for watching. <laughs>